Hold it. I think you're going to like this picture. Love That Bob. Starring Bob Cummings. Looking forward to seeing you at the OX5 convention. Hi, Margaret. Hi, Schultz. Uh, can you fly to Joplin right away? Right away? Margaret, I can. I'm photographing the United Nations girls today, right, Schultz? Right, boss. This is a family yeah. emergency. Grandpa has taken up with a lady acrobat. <laughs> a lady acrobat? <laughs> this is no joking matter. She has moved into Grandpa's house. <laughs> <laughs> Did you hear that? She has moved into his... Yes. I called up to invite him out here for the holidays. He said, I don't want to leave Alice. And I said, what, Alice? Operator. Then he goes uh, on about how this carnival goes broke in Joplin, and Alice's yes, uh, partner Josh leaves her Collins, stranded. Four, two, four, Grandpa five, falls yes. for her and takes her in. Yes, thank you. Well, the old buzzard... Your call to Joplin, but, sir. Yes. Yes, operator. Yeah, fine. Put him on. Now, you be tactful. Y yes. Uh, <laughs> hello, hello, Grandpa! I do, buddy boy. Uh, Grandpa? Uh, I was just talking to Margaret, and, well, I, I, w I was calling because I understand that you, you have a house guest. Yeah, yeah, that's right, boy. Uh, her name's Alice. She, she's the queen of the high wire. <laughs> uh, boy, she's a darling, too. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I just bought her a whole new wardrobe. Everything. Right, right from the skin out. Uh, Grandpa, look, you, you, you better be careful. No, no, son, you see, I had to do it. She didn't have nothing to wear except them skimpy little carnival tights. <laughs> well, Grandpa, what happened to her clothes? Yeah, well, you see, this good-for-nothing fella who done the act with her, he sold everything and ran off with a cooch dancer. It was a very sad thing. But, but I'm going to make it up to Alice. Alice, honey? Mm -hmm. Come on over here and give me a hug, won't you? <laughs> this one's going to take Grandpa for every penny he's got. Now listen, Gra uh, Grandpa, this is Margaret. Uh, tell me, how did your girlfriend Dixie Yates feel about Alice? No, you see, uh, th these here two didn't hit it off right from the start. No, no you see, uh, Alice jumped on Dixie and pulled her hair. Of <laughs> course, uh, you know how proud Dixie is of her hair. Yeah, I guess you can't blame her. She paid a fortune for it. <laughs> Well, Alice sounds kind of young and, and wild for you, Grandpa. Yeah, well, I guess she ain't the most practical companion for a fetter. She can't cook or sew or do housework or nothing like that. Of course, she ain't long on conversation. <laughs> but by dang it, <laughs> she's a lot of fun. <laughs> now listen, Grandpa. Just, just a second here, Bubby. Well, Alice is trying to steal my watch. She's crazy about jewelry. This dame's gonna dig the gold right out of Grandpa's teeth. <laughs> Grandpa, now listen to me. You throw that mooch and wire walker out of your house, or I'm coming out there to Joplin and throw her out for you. You understand? You lay a grimy Hollywood hand on Alice, and I'll turn you every way but loose. <laughs> That's your final word? Yeah. Alice, you'd like to add something? All right, honey. Let him have it. <laughs> Joplin. No dame gives me the raspberry. Grandma, <laughs> Bob, Alice sounds like a match even for you. Are you kidding, Margaret? I'll make a monkey out of her. <laughs> well, thanks anyway, Mr. Avery. Bye. Oh, I have called every top photographer. They're all busy. Look, couldn't you postpone the trip until after these United Nations pictures? Sorry, Schultz. Family comes first. Grandpa may be a skirt chasing old rascal, but he's still my grandpa. Is he ever? Your family, then. Call that king of the field and tell her to pre flight the beach. Oh, it's your navigation kit. Oh, yeah. Now, look, if you can't get a photographer, just cancel the. Oh. Hello. How do you do? Hello. Are you one of the United Nations girls? Yes, I'm Miss Harland. I've come to be photographed. Well, I'm afraid Mr. Collins has to leave town. Oh, but I had an appointment. I'm sorry. It's an urgent family matter. Oh, Schultze. How can you give personal family precedence over the family of nations? International harmony is our goal, and I, for one, stand ready to, to sacrifice all selfish interest to, to embrace this girl. Uh, goal. 
Hi there. I'm Bob Collins. Won't you just step into the studio here, please? <laughs> there you are. Boss, what about Joplin? Shall I keep trying to get a photographer? Of course, Schultz. But until you do, I've just got to carry on. <laughs> and you do carry on. <laughs> Hi, uh, Chuck. Oh. Hi, Mr. Fonda. Hey, I didn't know you were interested in photography. Oh, definitely. Definitely. Oh, that's quite a camera you got there. Hmm, made in Germany. Huh? Yeah, I came from Stuttgart. Oh, say, Mr. Fonda, tell me, how do you like these pictures? Oh, they're great. You're impressed, huh? I'll say. Then it's sure to work on those models. Hey, this is that... What? Listen, Uncle Bob had to fly to Joplin in a hurry. Huh? His whole harem of beautiful models is unguarded. Oh, yes, yes. Man, I'll line up dates from here to graduation. They may even do a movie about me. I was a teenage Uncle Bob. <laughs> Chuck! Folks, oh, Mom will be right back. Just make yourself at home. Hold it! What's the matter? This, this resorting to low, deceitful trickery to lure into your company these trusting, innocent models. Well, I'd... Can't you see that this is the first step on the road to crime? From stealing models, you'll go to stealing hubcaps, then tires, then cars. No, oh, not me. I'll quit after models. <laughs> what would your Uncle Bob say if he heard about this? Well, y y you won't tell him, will you? Mr. Fonda? Mr. Fonda? You give me your word of honor, you won't go near that studio, and I'll promise to keep your despicable masquerade a secret. Okay, I promise. I promise. I won't go down there. Just promise me you won't say anything Uncle Bob about it. You know, he won't like it at all. <laughs> oh, hi there, Schultz. I just uh, flew in from Germany. Thought I'd drop by and show Bob a few of my latest pictures. Mm -hmm. You took these? Oh, yes, yes, with this little gem I picked up in the Stuttgart. These are great. Well, they were good enough to win me first prize in the Deutschland Überallis Kameraklacken mit Schutterschnappen Käsekuchen Kontestbein. Käsekuchen? Uh, oh, yes, cheesecake. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. <laughs> Jesus, Mr. Fon, I didn't even know you were interested in photography. Oh, yes, it's getting so I fly a plane these days only to pay for my camera equipment. Hey, Mr. Fon, are you going to be busy today? Just taking pictures. Would you do the boss a favor and take some girls for him? Oh, I'm sorry, Schultz. I'd rather take pictures. Well, that's what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> pictures of girls. And like the little beauty here. Come here. Yeah. Show. Nice composition. Good bone structure. Beautiful flesh tone. How about the figure? Crazy. Crazy. <laughs> hey, Bob, you're not supposed to be here. Sosie said Boss, you were going... did you know that Mr. Fonda was a terrific photographer? Listen, no, no, I didn't know that. Yeah, he won a big contest in Germany for Kesekuchen. <laughs> the only contest he ever won in Germany was for beer belt. Look at that. Oh, now, Chuck, don't do that, Bob. The beautiful girls he got in Stuttgart. Look, he couldn't get a picture of an Indian in Albuquerque. Yeah, but oh. Fonda, sure. Snap a quick round. Uh, well, I don't do too oh. well with this tiny camera. I like the big daguerreotype sort of. Do you, do you mind if I interrupt you? This happens to be a light meter. Yeah. <laughs> oh, 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 yeah, yeah. Well, I'm not too familiar with this new no, equipment. Well, I just picked it up. You just picked it up at my house. That's where you picked it up. I could have you arrested for burglary. You know that. Oh, now, just a minute. I didn't steal this stuff, Bob. I borrowed it from Chuck. From Chuck? And what was Chuck doing with my cameras? Well, he knew you were leaving town and he wanted to help out. So, naturally, when I learned of the situation, I wanted to help myself. Help yourself to my models. You've been doing that for a long so time. So what? You got them to burn. And I like to play with matches. <laughs> I'm not going to drop and Chelsea. Boss, your grandfather's in trouble. Not as much trouble as I'd be if I left him here. Besides, the situation may have changed. Call Joplin and see, Chelsea. Bob, you are a model miser. Now, Paul, seriously. <laughs> If this were an ordinary model, I'd want you to take her out. I'd beg you to take her out, but you couldn't have any fun with this particular girl. I'll force myself. Well, listen, this girl represents a foreign power. One false move, one hint of romantic intentions could cause an international incident. 
You mean you really weren't going to date her? Are you kidding? Goodbye, Mr. Oh, oh, yes, goodbye, Gretchen. Well, uh, and I'm so looking forward to tonight. You tonight? Oh, yes. Gretchen. Well, you see, because he is also Dutch, he is going to show me Holland and Hollywood. Yeah, Gretchen. Wow. Oh, it is a beautiful place where he goes to meditate. Gretchen. And to mull over his problem. Gretchen. It, In it, fact, he calls it Mull Holland. <laughs> Double dealing, Matthew. Hold it, Sophie. Boss, they're you... ringing. Hold it. Hold it. Hold it. Hold it. Paul. Yes, operator. Could you... Paul. Sophie. Yes. All right, put him on. Yeah. If you behave yourself and stop taking your shoes off and throwing them around, you can have this here bottle of cola. Is that agreeable? Yeah, all right. Keep your girdle on there. Good <laughs> challenge photography. Uh, Grandpa? Uh, Grandpa, I just called uh, to see if maybe possibly you've gotten rid of Alice by now. Well, son, I ain't had so much fun since... Alice, <laughs> don't go to... What are you trying to do, bust my specs? <laughs> <laughs> I told you you couldn't drink out of the bottle. And let's keep your shoes on. Come on. What's going on there? Alice is sitting here drinking out of the bottle with her shoes off. She's laying flat on her back, holding the bottle between her feet. Now listen to me, Grandpa. You get that drunken carnival contortionist out of there. I'm. Hello, hello, Grandpa. That chair is a. She'll be canceled everything in tomorrow. I'm going back to Joplin, throw that old coot in my plane, and fly out here where I can keep an eye on him. Now, boss, remember what Margaret said. You can't use force on Grandpa. you got to be cagey. All right, I'll put him in a cage and fly him out here. <laughs> That's what I mean. you got to make him feel wanted. At the rate Grandpa's going, he's probably wanted in four states right now. <laughs> well, she yelled before. You should have heard him this time. <laughs> I was afraid this would happen. Getting Grandpa out here would be the ideal solution. But Bob will never accomplish it by force. Oh, I'll say you won't. Boy, that old man's a regular Missouri mule, isn't he? Yeah. Uh-huh. And you know, I just happen to be an old Missouri mule handler. Watch this. Gotta think like a mule thinks. <laughs> you make it the best three out of five. Don't you get overconfident now because you won the first two. Read <laughs> it. I'm gonna have that thing take it out. So they can hear himself think around here. Josh Collins, photography. Grandpa, this is Margaret. I just wanted to explain to you why Bob was so rude on the phone. You see, he's terribly upset and jealous because his models keep asking when you're coming back to Hollywood. His models? <laughs> They miss me, do they? <laughs> and this just makes Bob furious. In fact, he's on his way to Joplin right now to make sure you don't come out here. Why, that meddlesome young puppy. Well, I'd hop in my Jenny Berg and fly out there right now. Only, uh, only Alice here can't stand open cockpits. Oh, you see, the wind flaps her ears. <laughs> it just spanks her head something off. <laughs> if you for that, Maggie, I'd be buzzing out there right now. Oh, oh, don't do that, Grandpa. Why, if, if Bob got to Joplin and found you gone, he'd, he'd really be furious. Oh, that's the way it is, eh? All right, then, Maggie. I'm on my way. Bye. <laughs> oh, you old as a mule skinner, you. You didn't know I was a mule psychologist. <laughs> oh, Alice, honey. You know I'm going to hate to leave you. Yeah. And I'm going to need my car out in California to spark them there Hollywood models. Say, why don't you drive the car to California for me? We... No. No, I guess that's not such a good idea. Awful lot of crazy drivers on the road now. <laughs> okay, I get it. I'll call Cannonball Bobo, the race driver. Oh, he's wonderful. Yeah, it's great, too. It'll help that young fella celebrate his 83rd birthday. Yes, it is. Give me a kiss. <laughs> yeah. There you are, 
Alice, honey. Now, this note will introduce you to Mr. Bull. You see, you just call him Cannonball. <laughs> and, uh, after this banana that I loaded with sleeping powder, you ought to have a real nice snooze back here on the floor. It's nice and soft. <laughs> Wait. I fixed up another half dozen for you in case you get just a little restless during the night. I had to put them up here in the suitcase. Well, goodbye, little honey. <laughs> I hate to leave you. I'll see you in California, though. Now, you'll be a good little girl, won't you? You just eat your banana. <laughs> Milford. Thank you. Bob, I guess I should have told you. I just picked up your grandpa here about 20 minutes ago. Yeah? Where was he going? Took him out to Dixon's pasture. He had his old Jenny out there. Said he's going to fly to California. Look, did he, did he have a girl with him? No, but he was talking about some little dame who's going to follow him out there in his car. Milford, <laughs> did he mention the name Alice? Yeah, you know her? Not yet. <laughs> Let's see if his car's in the barn. Maybe she's still in the house. I... I hope so. I want to get a look at this baby. Yeah. The way the old guy talks, she must be a Lulu. <laughs> How about an old guy like that, calling a live one? <laughs> yeah, just as I thought, she's still here. She ain't gonna drive to California this old beetle, is she? <laughs> Bet your life she isn't. Oh, you got plenty of guts, a fireball like that. Ain't you afraid she'll tear into you? Nah. I know how to handle these wildcats. Yeah? Yeah, you see a dame like this has got to be told off right to her face. You say, look, baby, get through. So scram, hit the road, get lost. That ought to do it. One thing, wait till I'm out of sight before you tell her. Hello? Bob, where are you? I'm at Joplin Airport, Margaret. What about Alice? Uh, well, apparently, Margaret, she was gonna drive Grandpa's old Mitchell out to California, but I brought it here to the airport. I'm hiding it. She, she won't be able to find it. <laughs> well, I, I'm on my way, Margaret. I'll see you in the morning. Oh, Bob, don't fly tonight. Why don't you have something to eat and get a good night's rest? No, it's okay, Margaret. I found a sack of bananas in Grandpa's car. Yeah, I'll just eat them as I fly. Fine. Bye, honey. <laughs> I hope you talk as well as you fly, because there's an awful lot of explain. Oh, thank heaven we were on autopilot. Uh, just a moment. You and I... <laughs> this is Alice. If she wakes up, give her another banana, 
I loaded them with sleeping powder. Great. Treat her good. She's the best friend I got. See in California, Cannonball, Josh Collins. Now, that old buzzard. Making all this fuss about a chimp. Listen, you... Well, I guess I gotta take you with me. Otherwise, Josh won't stay there. Where are we? Yeah, the Prescott Range, that's fine. Okay, I'll tell you what I'm gonna do right now. I'm gonna land and find a motel so we can get some sleep tonight. Where's your car, son? I say, where's your car? I didn't notice you drive in. Oh, I, I, uh, I flew in. Well, I... <laughs> she, uh, have you got any pets? Boy, boy, have you got any pets? Uh, uh pets. Uh, uh, well, only Alice. Oh, she, she's my, my daughter. Uh. Yes, a uh, 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 little girl. Mm -hmm. I, I tied her. She's uh, <laughs> waiting outside. I uh, see. Well, I'll, I'll show you to your cabin. Then. Well, that, that won't be necessary. I'll, I'll, uh, I'll find it. Uh, Thank you. Good night. Good night. Oh, did you notice the way that young fella kind of staggered? Mm -hmm. If you ask me, he's been drinking. Well, don't hold it again anymore. You'd drink too if you had a kid look like his. This is Alice. Yeah, that's right, Josie. The first chip to long time in a Super E beach grass. <laughs> oh, boss, you didn't actually let her fly the plane, oh, did you? Oh, no, of course not, Josie. Just take off and landings. <laughs> How about that, huh? How about that? Yeah. Oh, put her in the dressing room till I can take her home, will you, okay. Josie? Oh, say, boss, yeah. uh, that gorgeous saw in the leopard skin bikini dropped by and left some more pictures. They're on my desk. Yeah, yeah, I'll take a look. Thanks, Josie. Josie, honey, uh, w would you get Miss Holland on the phone for me as soon as you can? Okay, Bob. Thank you. Uh, don't waste your time, Bobby. I showed her a mole Holland last night. Father, listen to me. <laughs> Just call me Hans Brinker. Tonight we're going skating. <laughs> she misses the Zyder Z. So I'll sit beside her and see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Paul, I can't thank you enough. You, you know, you, you've just saved me a very unpleasant phone call. What? Well, well, I hate to break dates with nice girls, and Miss Holland is a nice girl. She, she's a little cold, but she's a nice girl. Oh, oh, oh now, you, you don't expect me to dance to that jazz, do you? You're so jealous, you're green. Well, I, I'll admit, I would have been if I hadn't have met uh, Alice. Yeah. Who, who's Alice? Uh, run along, Paul. i got a lot of work to do. Hey, boss. Alice doesn't seem to like those civilized clothes she's wearing. She keeps trying Lock to... that door! Wow, 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 Go play Hansel and Gretel with your little Dutch ice cube. I've got some wild animal taming to do. That's Alice. She's heard your voice. She's trying to get to you. Don't unlock that door, Josie. You know how she loves pilots. Father, will you get out of here, please? Oh, Bob, let him see her. He'd get a big kick out of if... it. You bet he'll get a kick. But he's a little over the hill for those kind of kicks, don't you think? <laughs> over the hill! Chilty, uh, slip in and see if you can keep Alice quiet while I get the oh, Hans Brinker. Hi, Alice. Bob, let's, let's double date tonight. We'll all go skating. Are you kidding? Well, Alice would melt the ice. Well, it, it really, you, you know, in all fairness, she was your date tonight. <laughs> you bet she is. No, 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 I, I mean Miss Holland. She was the girl Alice, that you... I got Miss Holland on the phone for you. Oh, uh... Thanks, Shulte. It won't be necessary for me to talk to her now. Oh, the, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll talk to her. Paul, I, uh, oh, uh, hello. Hello, Gretchen. Uh, this is Paul Fonda. Gretchen, I, I have a terrible confession to make to you. I, I lied to you about Bob Collins. He's not a wolf. I am. I'm awful. Oh, here he is, Gretchen. The Dutch Sir Galahad. He's going to take you skating tonight. Paul, this is the dirtiest trick one man ever played on another. Oh. <laughs> Oh, no. Shusie, it, it, it's yeah. okay for me to meet Alice, Alice now. You, you, you yeah. can unlock the door. Gretchen, I'll pick you up right away.
part of Paul Fonda was played by Lyle Talbot, Miss Holland by Joan Tabor, the motel manager by Charles Cantor, the manager's wife by Isabel Withers, and the cabbie by Murray Alper. This is Bill Baldwin speaking.